two more small things to talk about here with the natural base and the natural log. First off is that transformations work the same as all other functions. So graphing e to the x plus 2 would be just like graphing 2 to the x plus 2 or 3 to the x plus 2. It's the same basic exponential growth function, but lifted up to. Everything gets lifted up to, especially the horizontal asymptote. And the y-intercept gets lifted up to. And then from there, everything else looks just like any other exponential function. Still has a domain of all real numbers, but the range, since we've lifted everything up to, is going to be from 2 to infinity. And that horizontal asymptote is going to show up in the end behavior too, not in the beginning part, because as x approaches infinity, f of x will also approach infinity. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's wrong with me right now. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. But the second half of the end behavior, the back half, as x approaches negative infinity, this will be different because f of x will be approaching 2. And then our transformations work the same for logs also as they did before. We've got two transformations in here. And I do want you to be careful about this one. Notice the negative x plus 2. That negative has to be factored out so that we can see the h is actually positive 2. The v is negative 1, which will flip things backwards. The h is positive 2, which will move everything over to the right. So the vertical asymptote will be moved over to the right. and everything else will be backwards. So instead of the x-intercept being one space to the right of the vertical asymptote, there'll be one space backwards. And then everything else will kind of look the same as a regular log. The domain is completely flipped around. Instead of going from 0 to infinity, it's backwards, so it's starting at negative infinity. And instead of ending at 0, because we moved everything to the right 2, it goes until 2. But the range wasn't affected. That's still all real numbers. And the end behavior as is flipped backwards. Instead of x needing to grow towards infinity in order for g of x to grow. It's backwards. As x approaches negative infinity, g of x will grow to infinity. And on the right-hand side, as x gets closer and closer and closer to that vertical asymptote, g of x will fall towards negative infinity. And then the last piece, which really is totally different, is not connected, is something called continuous interest. Uh, continuous interest takes where we started from the beginning of the lesson with our talk about what E is, and it makes it a little bit more concrete. So we're going to use this formula, A equals P times E to the R T. And there aren't many Algebra 2 students out there whose math teachers' names show up in a formula you have to learn during the year. So you guys are super lucky. Um, in this case, the A is the account balance at any given time. P is the principal you started with. R is the interest rate, and T is the number of years. Essentially what we're doing is taking the idea of compounding in, um, before, what we talked about up here in this section, what we're doing is taking this number and instead of putting in these ridiculously big numbers here, we're going to actually put in the number as if you were in compounding an infinite number of times. And that is the 2.71828 dot 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 dot, which we call E. So if we have a specific example here. Angela was born, her grandparents deposited $3,000 into a college savings account 
paying 4% interest compounded continuously. So our P is 3,000, and the R is 0.04. Those are what we call parameters. They're not variables. So when we type in the equation, we would say A of X. You could call it A of T, um, but for Desmos' sake, I'm going to call it X instead of T is equal to P times E to the R, which was 0.04, and T, which I'm calling X to make it easier on Desmos. Now, you're looking at this graph and you're saying, wait a minute, where's my graph? Well, if you're starting with $3,000, that means that you're going to need to go way bigger on the x-axis because $3,000 is just where you start. Now, I don't really need all this negative time here. And so that is the graph of her growth. Notice how it's exponential. It doesn't get crazy steep quite yet, but it's about to. It's a very small interest rate. So that the um, steepness doesn't really show up quite yet. And we have a couple of questions here. What will her balance be after 10 years? Well, all you need to do to find that out is plug in 10 for x, a of 10. And with Desmos, it, it reads function notation. So you can just type in a of 10, or you can look on the graph when x is 10. Let's get it just right. The y value is 4,475.47. So $3,000 after 10 years has become $4,700. Um, not bad for not doing any work whatsoever. And the question asked, how long will it take the balance to reach 10,000? So what we can do this in two different ways. Number one is we can solve algebraically. We want to know when it says the balance reaches $10,000, that means A is equal to $10,000. So we want to solve this for x, or you can call it for t if you want. And solving this equation is not so hard, because we just learned that solving an equation with an e just means at some point you're going to take the natural log. But that's OK. Your answer will have a natural log in it. 10,000 divided by 3,000, that reduces to 10 over 3, equals e to the 0.04x. And then we'll take the natural log of both sides. So the ln of 10 thirds equals 0.04 to the x times x. So if I want to know what x is, it's ln of 10 thirds divided by 0.04, which, you know, if you want to leave it like that, that's oh, fine. That's OK. Divided by 0.04. But I do want to remind you that 0.04 is 1 25th. So you could just write this as 25 times the ln of 10 thirds. And that would be the answer. We can show you how to do this on the graph. Also, to do it on the graph, what we would say is, all right, when does y equal 10,000? See that line up here? I want to know when does my red function, my exponential growth, hit 10,000? Well, one thing I can do is just look on the curve there. It takes 30.99099 years. So just a little bit more than 30 years. We want to compare that number to what well, we got, 25 times the natural log of 10 thirds. Hey, it's the same number. So that was 30.099 years. And I'll show you part C also. Let's say her grandparents say, wait a minute, after 10 years, or after 18 years, at the, way, at the rate we're going, the number, amount of money that we put in, that would be worth about $6,000. Um, and you might know this. Um, $6,000 is not enough to pay for college. So let's say that her grandparents decided, well, we want her to have enough money to pay for college, so let's make sure she has $100,000 
um, after 18 years. The question is how much would they have needed to invest at the start? So we can solve this equation slightly differently. We know we want $100,000 to be at the end. We know the e to the 0.04 times 18, because we know we're talking about after 18 years, we just want to know what is this p supposed to be. Well, this is a much easier question to solve. If I want to solve for p here, all I need to do is divide by e to the 0.04 times 18 on both sides, and I'll get p. So p is 100,000 divided by e to the 0.04 times 18. 18 times 0.04, by the way, is 0.72, so I'm just going to write that. Sorry, you couldn't see what I was writing. 100,000 equals p times e to the 0.04 times 18. And so we're dividing by e to the 0.04 times 18 to get p by itself. And then we can turn back to Desmos to plug that in. 100,000 divided by e to the 0.72 is 48,675 dollars. That's how much they would have needed to start with. in order to end with $100,000 after 18 years.